and welcome to the Dressage Anywhere podcast. Hello everybody, it's Ruth from Dressage Anywhere here and I am absolutely delighted to have Gaynor Colborne joining us today. We wanted to have a quick chat with Gaynor, find out more about Dressage to Music, um, her background, where she's come from, what she does, what she's doing in the future and also answer a couple of questions that have come from you guys. So hello Gaynor and welcome. Hello, thank you very much. It's, it's very nice to be here and it's nice to see everyone, not that I can see them. But <laughs> <laughs> virtual seeing. Oh it's great to have you, thanks. Um, so tell us a bit more about yourself. Um, how, where, what, where, what's your background? Where did you come from? How did you get into dressage to music? Because you do some amazing Well, I think, um, I think possibly we can almost blame Neridi for that. <laughs> um, because it does actually go back to 1980 when... I mean, I'm a professional musician, always have been. I'm a composer. Um, and when I was 17, I studied at Wellington Riding. So Neridi was my instructor. Oh, wow. And, yep, we got on very well. And my other instructor was Pat Manning, who was one of the world's top, top trainers, Pat Manning, uh, FBHS. Yeah. And between the two of them, I got hooked onto dressage. And John and Neridi had been to um, Goodwood, so it was the year before I started doing it. And I got quite friendly with them, and I went to dinner with John and Neridi. And they, I don't know if you've ever been to Neridi's house. Yeah. You have. Well, you know there's a grand piano in yes. the sitting room. Right. Well, John or someone had videoed a lot of Goodwood. <coughs> And I was just sitting at the piano, as you do, because if there's a piano in a house, I will sit at it, because I can't not. And they had Goodwood on without the, the sound. And I was tinkling away, and that was where it came from. Oh, wow. That's how dressage music started. Wow. And my very first client was, <coughs> excuse me, Jenny Morriston Clark. Brilliant. And her stallion, Dutch Courage. <coughs> And that was when she was doing all the Olympics. Um, and I went down to Catherston Stud as a 17-year-old, and we did um, a demo. Jenny and I did a demo last year, um, anniversary demo. Yeah. And throughout the demo, it was absolutely jam-packed. There were 1,500 people. They had to hire um, banks of seating. Oh, and Jenny and I were talking at the beginning, and she said, oh, and this, this slip of a thing came, and I was scared stiff of her. And I said, well, I was scared stiff of you. <laughs> so I've known Jenny for 40 years, <coughs> and really that's where it all started. And the BBC did a couple of programmes about us, which were filmed at Wellington Riding. And I was talking to Neridi a couple of weeks ago, and she said, do you remember when you were doing the bit that was filmed with Jenny, they videoed you or they filmed you next to the mucky. <laughs> so Jenny and I were walking along, talking about Dutch courage, going to the Olympics, the music I was doing for them, next to the Wellington <laughs> mucky. <laughs> Brilliant. So that, that's how I started in Dressage to yeah. Music when I was 17. Wow. And it's how Dressage to Music started as we know it and of course the history then i'm sure neridi's told you is john and neridi then started the wellington riding competitions yeah so i think it's fair to say that john neridi jenny and i created yeah. dressage to music yeah as we know it now um it's incredible and look, yeah. look where it where it's gone you know it's a global phenomenon now isn't yeah. it yeah and the four of us made it. Yeah, that's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, so I, I know um, we have lots of chats, Ner Neridi and I, about it, and we, yeah. we we look back at good times. And of course, Jenny and I'm still very close to, to Jenny as well. So yeah, I went. You to asked. Your... I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I went to your demo um, last year. Was it last year? That you did year, February. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but it was absolutely brilliant and I was I was so taken aback watching you um, with you had all of your keyboards and, and everything, your whole setup in the arena. 
and actually watching you playing the music live um, and adjusting the the tempo and the the r- rhythm. I don't know all the technical musical terms, but yeah, just making adjustments live as the horse is riding around the arena in front of you. It's just incredible. Yeah. Well, after after forty years, but remember, as well as being because um, I, I trained all my horses with Auntie Pat, Pat Manning, and my horses all got to Grand Prix, so I had the the bonus of being a professional musician with. 40 years experience I mean I, I'm basically a concert pianist I went to the Royal Academy and as a scholarship and I, I'm a classical musician but as a session musician I play just about anything anyone asks so I have no limitations as to what people can know. It's, it's fa- I, I absolutely loved it and there was such a range of horses and riders you know we had um, we had a, I think it was a 14 hand Welsh pony um, we had I think- yeah, that was thirteen too. That was um, Sam Sam Roberts on Moyle View Prince Consort, and Sam is the um, world's leading show pony rider. Yeah. So we had we had a brilliant. brilliant <laughs> it was ride. amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. And wasn't it um, the power rider Erin uh, Orford as well? Yes, wonderful, yes. absolutely wonderful, Absolute. wonderful rider. Yeah. And I, I sincerely hope that Erin will will go to um, Tokyo. Oh. Fingers crossed. So, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, and the music that I did for for Dior was so so personal. Mm. Yeah, it was lovely, absolutely lovely. But because I create the music from nothing, and I don't. Can you see in the background? There's yes. The All of your things. instruments. <laughs> well, it's just some of them. I mean, because I record the music, every instrument is recorded individually. I don't patch and paste or use music libraries or anything like that. So the music is always very personal to me because it's created. It's not someone else's music stuck together. But and, um, and that means that you can create something that's very personal to the horse and rider combination as well, doesn't and it? And I do. Um, I think probably 75% of the people who use my music cry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because I always try and put something poignant in. Yeah. And um, certainly, uh, I, I've had a few at the Nationals. They've all, they've all done well, but, but Catherine was... I've still got others to go. But Catherine um, had very personal music for her. Um, because everything was to do with her, her life going through horses and... Yeah. The, the sort of struggles that she had. Oh, wow. Oh, that must have been great to ride to. She's got an even raunchier one than that. Yeah, I, I've done, yeah. Uh, I think I've done three lots of music for Alberto now. Yeah. Um, and the one which is going to be for her piece, PSG hasn't been written to yet. Well, it has, but it hasn't been performed yet. That one, that one is something else. Is that on this week? No, she's 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 not qualified yet because Alberto's only just started in PSG. Okay. So but, did she uh, did she win something? Which class did she win at the national? She won the advanced medium freestyle yesterday. Oh, so. oh that's brilliant! You and she got a score of seventy one point four four. Wow! And she was considerably above everyone else. Oh, that's brilliant! Oh. You must be really pleased when you... Because you've had a lot of winners, haven't you, with your music? 10,952. Flip an egg. That's amazing. Yeah. You have to keep well, out. <laughs> those, are the only, those are the recorded ones. Not everyone tells me. But this is worldwide because yeah. I do them all over. And I've got clients in Australia, Chile, um, Spain, Portugal. It's literally all over the place. Yeah. Um, and because it, it means a lot to me, I don't do this to make money out of it. I do it because it's my baby. Yeah. And because the four of us, Jenny, John, Neridi and myself, because we gave birth to Dressage to Move, as, as it is now, it's my baby. And I want to be accessible to everyone. I don't want to make it um, expensive. So I charge what it costs me to do it. Wow. And that means that I have thousands of people worldwide who use my music. And I have a 97% win rate. Wow. So... Yeah, that's really good. If ever I get back into music and competing again, I know where I'm coming. (laughs) 
But do, do you have a horse? I do, I do. And we did music. And we won the class, but I think there were only about three people in it. Um, no, we did, one. <laughs> it was a novice, a novice music test. Probably about, oh, I don't know, nine years ago or something. It was at Wellington. Um, and I, I put the music together myself, which was quite awful. Um, but I but took, you, gave, you gave it a go, which I is fine. I yeah. And I, I, I did my homework. I figured out what the beats per minute were. I had the technology to, you know, put it all together and speed things up and slow things down a bit. Um, so it fit him. Um, and I practiced it like mad, um, and then we went and we won. And it's a really, oh, it's quite an emotional thing, dressage to music, isn't it? When you have a piece that's personal to you, it was a particular. I think it was um, it was a bit of jazz music for the walk, and it was the theme tune. Do you remember Barry Norman used to do that film? That was my walk music, and I swear to God, Jeffrey just strutted across the arena to that. It was just, it, and it made me feel well, quite emotional. You know, I'm doing lots of free sessions online. Yes. Why don't you have one? I've done. I think I've done eighty-seven now. I, th- there's no people don't have to go ahead and and have a, a competition music. The, the reason for doing it is because I still, after 40 years, I'm not terribly impressed by a lot of the music people use. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm doing all these free sessions with um, no, no necessity for them to buy music off me or anything like that. It's just so as people who don't do it can experience riding to live music of the right speed yeah. and music. Because of course, as I'm playing it live, there, you don't have to do this thing where you go to the cafe and you go on, you log on, and you look at music, look at a music library. I'm playing it there and then, yeah. and the joy. This is the reason for doing it. Nerdy is the same. The joy of doing it and seeing these great big beams on people's faces. So, if you still got Jeffrey, yes, book it. Yes. Because it's great fun. Yeah, oh, I'll look that one up, definitely. I think that's that's definitely for us. Well, I'm doing all over the world. I mean, all, the, all that people need for these sessions is they need a friend who's got Facebook yeah. and they need um, a mobile themselves that they can hear me on. Yeah. And they do need, if possible, either 4G or Wi-Fi. Yeah. Other than that, I've, I've done Wi-Fi. everything. We've got Wi-Fi on our yard in the yeah, end. work. Because I, I, I did one a couple of weeks ago in Melbourne. Oh, wow. And the, the signal in Melbourne was better than I get down the road. <laughs> I'm not so, surprised. Yeah. I know, I do know that one of our members is absolutely made up with the music that you've done for her. Um, she, when I... You can't tell me who she is, but you can tell me what her horse is called. Uh, no, I can tell you who she is. Oh, okay. Uh, a lady called Fiona, and her horse is called Tim. Um, oh, Fee. Um, oh, right. They have. Fee is, oh, yes. I don't remember what their combined age is. Uh, well, she is 74 or something. something. <laughs> he's 27. Yeah. Oh, he's and Fee there. is in her mid 70s. Yeah. And what a lovely, lovely lady she is. Oh. And um, she gave me carte blanche to do anything. And she did a, a very, very nice um, prelim test. She's very humble. And yes. she has no need to be humble. Yeah. And she did she did this lovely little test. And I put um, I put romantic music on it Ooh. because she loves Tim so much. So I thought if we do romantic music, then she'll know how much I care that she loves her horse. I read so much deeper into it than just slapping a bit of music here and a bit of music there. To me, it's it's, it's a personal, oh, I hate it when they sit on the, the X Factor. It's a journey. <laughs> it is, <laughs> but, isn't it? Yeah. I'm with Fee. Um, oh, she's such a sweet lady. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's, she's uh, one of our... Uh, 
going to say oldest members, but not in terms she of, probably is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in terms of how long that she's she's been with us, she's been competing with us right from the beginning lovely. for the last ten years. Oh, and, uh, lovely. She does and Tim is a dear little boss, and he, he's very obedient, yeah. and all the transitions were in the right place. Yeah. No, I was thrilled with her. Oh, but, she, well, I know she is absolutely delighted. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I've got a couple of other questions um, that came up from from some other riders, um, which I hope you can help us with. Um, one lady was asking about the floor plan. Yeah. And she said that she felt a huge amount of pressure to be inventive in the floor plan that she was created. Um, but she was worried that being so inventive would actually interrupt the flow of the test. Um, so mm. she was wanting to know how important is it to be inventive um, mm. without affecting the flow? Um, I think for you, for me to answer that question, she's got to understand that dressage to music should be a thing of beauty. Yeah. It, it should be, our original concept 40 years ago is it, it should be akin to ballet or dancing, uh, modern dance or ice skating, ice dancing. And the whole, the whole thing about dressage to music is you've got the artistic side, which is the harmony and the um, inventiveness, and then you've got the technical side. And I think the answer there is you, you make it as beautiful as you can. And, and I've, I've probably done about 30,000 patterns now. And that's the thing. Think of it as patterns. Okay, yeah. Don't think of it as movements. Um, it shouldn't detract. If the technical side is good, then the inventiveness won't be a problem. The only time it becomes a problem is when people ride things beyond their capability. Yeah. So always with a floor plan, make it... That's why when I do floor plans for people, I don't have a load of stock floor plans like lots of other people do. Every single floor plan is designed to suit that individual horse, that individual rider. Yeah. Because there are going to be things that um, each horse and rider is good at, and there's certainly going to be things they're not good at. Yeah. And with your floor plan, you've got to enhance what's good and disguise what's bad. <laughs> yes. Um, so the answer there is be inventive, yeah. but base it around the c capabilities of yourself and your horse. Yes. Do you think that answers the question? That is perfect, yes. Um, she had a follow-on from that as well about, um, and you touched on it there, about non-compulsory movements. So if you included some non-compulsory movements... You've got to be good at them. That's that's what she was asking. How would yeah. how would they be judged? How would they be marked? Well, if you don't do them, they can't be marked. If yeah. you do them and you do them badly, yeah. you will get marked down because yeah. the the idea of putting the non compulsories in is you're enhancing your test. So if um, what level is this lady? Mm, I'm not sure. I think kind of medium, advanced medium. Okay. So the sort of thing that uh, medium, advanced medium can add in is you, you can do things, if it's advanced medium, you can only do one single change, but you can make it more interesting by doing five, you know, a, a five times change or a six times change. Yeah. Uh, and that makes the single change a lot more interesting okay. than, than just doing it on a corner. But if you can't do it, don't do it. Don't do it, no. Um, the other things that you can add in are Ronvert, Trauvert, yeah. things yeah. like that. Yes. Um, in the lower levels, it, you're more likely to get it, get it wrong. Yes, yes. It's the same thing. If um, oh, it's the sort of thing. If if um, someone says something to you, and you have to bite your tongue and not reply, if it's not good, don't do it. Yes. Yeah. So if it's not nice, don't say don't it. Don't do it. No, absolutely. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, another question we've got is. Uh, do most song tracks have the same beats the whole way no. through? Because they no. kind of adjust and change, don't they? 
They do. Um, well, they do. They do adjust with me. I suspect when people patch and paste, or you patch and paste, I sus- you probably use something called Audacity, did you? Mm, I can't remember. It's so long ago. I can't remember. I think I it think- was iMovie and a few other bits and bobs. <laughs> yeah, because all oh, right, um, because there's lots of free software yes. that you can use for patch and pacing, and you can vary speed things. Um, as you get more advanced, the horses become more elevated and they become more regular. So when I'm doing the different movements, it doesn't show as much. So the disparity between, say, a half pass, a shoulder in, a working trot, or a collective trot, extended, the elevation and the power of the horse and the experience make them the same. So they don't vary. When you've got a prelim, there's a lot of variation. Um, but because they don't do medium trot or anything, mm-hmm. it's not so not so important. You just hope that the, the horse or pony will ride to the correct speed of music. Yeah. This is presupposing that everyone uses the right speed music. Yes. And there's, there's one question we get asked a lot about um, music that has vocals in it. Um, mm. Well, we've always kind of steered away from too many vocals. Yeah. It be most most people would. Yeah. Um, going back 40 years, um, I can remember one of one of the four of us when we were talking about that, because we were interviewed by the BBC several times on this. And my consensus of opinion is if you have music that has vocals on it, it's distracting. Yeah. And it's actually detracting from the, the rhythm. Um, and people will watch the horse in a different way if it's got vocals, because you start listening to the music yeah. and you start relating to the words of the music. If you've got music which hasn't got vocals, I'm, I'm talking as a professional musician here, um, this is a lot deeper than people need to know, but if you're watching music that has got no vocals and you're watching a visual, you're then getting the emotion. So music without vocals is a lot more emotional than music with, okay. from the viewer's point of view. Yeah. If you have music which has got vocals, the person watching buys into the vocals. The, the thing that I always feel is when you do music, um, people will tell me that they've won and I'll put it on my Facebook and I'll congratulate them. But I think it's really, how can I put this? I think it's really poor to go, yay, 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 woo, 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 won, 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 because that is belittling everyone who hasn't won. So yeah. you have to be um, very pleased for your riders and feel the emotion, but not not denigrate everyone else for not winning. Yeah, yeah no, that's, just, that's a difficult one, um, isn't it? Yeah. And if if you watch the Olympics and see um, all the the running and the track and field things, mm. the person that that wins always goes and hugs the people that haven't won yes. and they don't make a big thing about I won you didn't yeah. so I've got lots of people competing all the time I've got people competing in Dancing with the Stars in Australia and, but I just that's it they, they do it and I don't have to I don't yeah. have to pick it up you just it's enjoy just, it yeah what's the word um, enigmatic I think you have to be enigmatic yeah, yeah, I like that. You're forcing me not to be enigmatic at the moment, but normally I wouldn't. All right, talk to us about PPL, Gainer. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, it's aimed at the phonographic industry. So BD have um, the PPL licence that people will have to sign up for. So they have to give the, the name of the music, the amount of time, and... It, this is going to be attributed not to the artist this is attributed to the record company okay now you can use copyrighted material um, for example if um, someone was going to it's called rip so if you rip from a CD um, say it's a Paul McCartney piece oh no in fact say it's Elton John um, if you want to use some of Elton John's actual recordings, you have to contact Elton John 
and ask permission oh, to yeah. use his recording and you will have to pay I don't know how much 50,000 something like that for using part of his material yeah. or if it's not, not done that way you have to if you're this is for financial gain so if someone is creating music for fi financial gain mm -hmm. and they're using someone else's intellectual property that is the no-no. Right, yeah. So the PPL licence covers BD and it covers the venue. It doesn't cover the person doing the music. Now, you're a fabulous example. You told me that you created music ten years, nine years ago. Yes. And you probably used the real thing. But you weren't doing... No, that's okay. You weren't doing it for financial gain. No, that's true. So I that's all right. Make anything out of our novice music. <laughs> yeah, well, no. Um, <laughs> well, no. If you had come to someone else, I and mean, it's not what I do because I, I am the artist, but if you, if you wanted to use an artist's material, you can make the music for you, yeah. but you can't charge for it. Okay, yeah. So when you get people who are using copyrighted material, and to be fair, most of the people... Um, that are doing ripped music use non copyright material yeah. so that that 's fine yeah but if you do it the other way, you have to let the performing rights society know and that 's how we get paid that 's how I get paid so whenever i um, I wrote a musical with um, Perrin Butler and it was a big success, and we, we made lots of money out of it. But the royalties, and this is the royalties versus copyright, yeah. the royalties are paid to us through the Performing Rights Society. Yeah. So if you're using copyrighted material, you have to either get the explicit permission of the artist or you have to declare it to the Performing Rights Society. Yeah. This is why BD um, have insisted that all the people who rip and burn from music libraries use non-copyright. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's a mind, yeah. map, isn't it? Now, when I do clinics, I don't go with um, a preconceived idea. Okay. So, if what's your horse called? Jeffrey. What's his real name? Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah, it's just Jeffrey. <laughs> right. So I would then oh, ginger. Ginger. Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> that doesn't give me a lot. Um, if you if you have a horse that has a name yeah. that you can relate to, I would always at least tip my hat to the name of the horse. Okay. So I'd find a piece of music, and the chances of people finding non copyright music to go to do is very remote. Because I I can go back into any any type of music. Well, you, you've been to one of my demos. You've seen me do it. Yes. So. I would then say to the, the rider, what did you have at your wedding? What was your first dance? Oh, um, uh, Santana. Which one? Oh, gosh. Oh, no, this is bad, isn't Evil it? Raised? Black Magic Woman? No, no. Um, it was more, more uh, recent than that. I can, I've got it going round in my head, but I can't sing, so I'm not going to sing that. Uh, From there... I would then try that and yeah. I mean because I can do it there and then I don't have to go up to the canteen and log on and find it on the computer clue to that um, <clears throat> so I would then find out <coughs> what they liked and then we would try it with the horse the horse will react if the yeah. horse likes music or doesn't like music it will react and probably nine times out of ten the horse chooses music oh wow really yeah, because they will react. Yeah. So the that's choice like, of music. That's like what I said about um, Jeffrey with our our walk music. That that jazzy thing. That's the one. <laughs> so if um, if people want to find out more about you and what you do and and how they can get involved with you, where should they where should they go? You, you've got a website, haven't you? Yeah, I've got a website. Um, it's dressage to music by Gaynor Coben dot something or other. Uh, or there's my Facebook yeah, dot something or other. <laughs> uh, or there's my Facebook page. Um, 
there's also the booklet that I, I wrote, which I send out. Everything that I can send out free of charge for people, I, I do free. Oh, wow. um, I've also got the Schooling to Music CDs, which lots of people have found very helpful. Quite a few people just listen to them in their car. <laughs> Someone else like doing the hoovering to them. Um, so th there's lots of... Um, I mean, because it, it's my baby and because I'm not sort of trying to force people to um, have my music or anything like that, I like to give lots of support. Yeah. And I've got a couple of people who um, I did music for even as long as ago as three years ago. And if it needs changing, I'll change it for them. So I, I don't say, right, that's it. You've got to have brand new music. I'll just make the alterations, send it. And they say, how much? I'll say, ah, for sure. <laughs> because it's more important for me that they go on and they perform and they're proud of their performances. If they, this is the answer to the other question. If they win, that's great. That's the item on the proverbial. But as long as they go and they perform and they are proud and everyone is proud of them and they're proud of their horse, that's what, what counts. Yeah. Not the money, not the winning. I think I'm old fashioned. No, I think that's lovely. I really do. I mean, everybody has to earn a living somehow, but the, the passion that you've got for well, it. It's I earn my living out of being a composer and a session musician. So because I earn my money from working with stars and well-known yeah. people and using Dropbox to send stuff to New York and this, that and the other, it means that I can do the dressage music yeah. as not as a charity, it's not that at all. It, it's as my it's my baby and I'm promoting my baby yeah. and I'm doing the best I can to him I'm sure you've spoken to lovely Neridi about this in the past <laughs> but I just want to improve it and improve it and improve it we've got a long way to go yet yeah. Yeah. that's lovely thank you so much Gaynor for joining us um, well, I, I hope I answered the thing no, you've done a great job. Thank yeah. you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm to, to the post and everything on, on social okay. media so people can find I, because, because I do the online sessions, and I hope you're going to contact me afterwards and I'll give you a date, oh, yeah, people yeah. can always contact me um, if they want to FaceTime me or whatever it is and talk about their dressage to music. That's fine. I'm happy to talk to people. I'm happy to help people. I don't have to make anything out of it, but I want to be there as a support network. Yeah. And because I'm a Grand Prix rider and I'm a musician, yeah. the two together mean I can help both ways. Brilliant. Fun. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gaynor. <laughs> That's all right. Thanks for listening to the Dressage Anywhere podcast. Dressage Anywhere is an online platform where you can upload your dressage test videos and enter competitions with other riders from around the world. Find out more about us at dressageanywhere.com, Dressage Anywhere on Facebook, Dressage underscore Anywhere on Instagram and Dressage underscore Comp on Twitter.